three. Hello, can you hear me? Jozef Senre, it's pretty close. <laughs> Almost. Uh, uh, he is a strength and, uh, certified strength and conditioning specialist. He's uh, done some strength and conditioning in the NCAA level. And today he's going to give us a talk about some fascial stretching. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Um, it's a privilege and honor. It's my first presentation ever on uh, fascial stress therapy. I have been a NCAA Division I strength and conditioning coach. I kind of changed my title to human and athletic development coach because all you deal with humans, correct, right? We don't work on robots. There's no AIs out there walking around that we know of, correct? So uh, it's all about human. So if you're an athlete, you're a person that you can relate to and you can relate to, you create a better environment for healing, then they will heal better and faster. That's number one. So I can come through as very intimidating and uh, the most unawkward person, I think, for a fascial stress therapy, and you'll see why, because it, most of it happens in the parasympathetic nervous system, not in the sympathetic. That's why it's very different from the traditional stretching that we know of, of I lay you down, I take my athlete, and I just push your leg up. Okay, that's crankled up and out. Okay, because that really targets muscle spindles and GTOs, and now what I want to do. Uh, but yeah, my name is Joseph Sendry. Without further ado, uh, my wife is sitting in the audience, probably no, more nervous about that than anything else, okay? But uh, her name is Natasha. She got her master's in athletic training from Texas Tech, and uh, that's when we moved back from Switzerland where I was playing professional basketball to Lubbock, okay? And that's how I know Larry, and that's how I got involved with uh, strength and conditioning. And FST came about I was sitting at a very cold uh, high school football stadium sitting by a CrossFit lady who got her level one certification in fascial stress therapy. And uh, she goes, have you checked out this place called Stretch to Win? And by no means am I trying to sell their product. I am not, I don't get a cuff from them. It was easier for me to just do a presentation that they provided me because all the copyright and trademark issues because I don't know what I can talk about that is not trademarked or copyrighted by them. Again, I don't get no cut payback. I don't want you to get the course. I want you to do is spark conversation, and I want you to see if you get interested in the fashion as much as I did to the day. Because I got my level one, I got my level two, I'm going back to my level three so I can teach it. And I'm a certified strength and conditioning coach. What I do is human athletic development, but this is a tool in my toolbox. Because I deal, I have a post-stroke patient right now. I had a parched div uh, patient, 14-year-old. I had a lady with scoliosis over 4 degree in her spine, over 53 years old, with uh, sciatica for 16 years that I released her after one session. So I've had some successes. And I always tell them I don't guarantee anything, but I never felt that well after I got stretched for the first time. So it's just kind of a personal experience. And I use it, uh, I wish somebody could stretch me, okay? Uh, and it has nothing to do with, really, it's your comfort level with somebody who's 6'9", even if you're 5'1", you can stretch me. I have a client who's 5'2", 110-pound lady. So this is very different nervous system for me. I cannot stretch somebody who's 5'1", 5'2", and 120 pounds, the traditional way of stretching. Everybody knows that, right? I can't just, because I would break her, okay? <laughs> or break him, okay? Uh, let's see if I can get this going. Maybe I can move on to the next slide. Okay, so there is a disclaimer. And again, it was just much easier, much convenient for me to go this way, and I can give you my five cents on why fascial stress therapy is great and has worked. And it's been around for over 20 years. And like I said, I ran through this lady who happens to do CrossFit, <laughs> you know, my arch nemesis. Not really if it's done right, done right, the right way. I'm also a USA weightlifting uh, sports performance coach, advanced sports performance coach, CSCS to the National Academy of Sports Medicine. I go to all kinds of conferences because I just want to learn. And that's why my wife and make a big, pretty good group because she has a master's in athletic training. And all we talk about is the human body because we're just fascinated by it. <laughs> And every day we learn something and we're like, well, did you know this? I mean, just one more thing. Like, 
I add one more thing to the list of things that we didn't know about the human body, okay? So FST is not this, okay, as you'll see. That's not what I'll be performing on you, pulling you, you know, with my thumbs and whatnot, okay? To everything, I really believe in APP, it's appropriate physical progression to everything you do in life. And uh, also with that being said, I would like to quote Mel Sif. It's a renowned sports scientist from this book. There is generally no such thing as a unsafe stretch or exercise only an unsafe way of executing any movement for a specific individual at a specific time. So it's all about context, okay? I think everybody understands, it's all about context. So like I said, I have to be able to, and it's not really fair to say I'm not lowering, but also my nervous system, if this patient is laying on my table and let's say it's the 5'1 lady who's 110 pounds, and she doesn't feel comfortable with me, and let's say she feels comfortable because we have the trust relationship developed, but if when I touch her skin, because this is very personal in a way, and then we'll do some practice at the end, and I cannot teach you FST, but I just want to show you how it's different from regular, because it's about, and I'll, Take this out as bad as I can. I gotta get stronger. Uh, can't erase whiteboards anymore. Uh, okay. Talk. Fraction, oscillation, circumduction. Okay. That's what it's about. So when I have this patient, I imagine her on my table right now, and I did this table high for me because of my levers. Okay, this is very hard to do on the ground. I cannot give you the proper traction, and I can get the feel. And once I touch her skin, let's say if I take her shoes off, her body will sense my arousal, if my sympathetic, if I'm really like in coaching mode per se. Because I can really turn it on, and I can really tone it down. And that's the other thing that FST have taught me indirectly. I think it made me a, because my <laughs> teacher always to say, Gentle. <laughs> so I have to be able to really calm down. I have to tone down my autonomic nervous system. I have to be very calm. I have to be calmer than the patient. And see, I'm able to do that now, even on stage. I'm basically, I'm pretty much slow down my heart rate. Like, I have to, this is a skill that I had to work on myself. And it has come, it was, <laughs> I had to work on it because I know that I can help people and I want people really feel as good as I felt after I got on the table, after getting my level one and level two. And I want to know more because it's been around, you know, so long. So for, uh, for, for you guys and, you know, I don't know, there's strength coaches, athletic therapists, because me, my wife and I kind of changed that because people still relate athletic trainers to like, oh, so you work out people. No, you don't. Okay, athletic trainers, athletic therapists, and occupational therapists, PTs, it's a very different professions in a way, but you all deal, like I said, with humans. So we kind of changed it into athletic therapist, because you guys are also therapists. Because if you can develop a relationship with whoever your patient, client is, you already create a better healing environment for them, because they trust you. And then they will listen to you, and they actually will apply the things you tell them and the homework you give them. If they don't trust you, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> your rehab might take twice as long. So it's going to be very interesting. Um, and uh, so I got into FST and the fashion for trainers. So I want to discuss a little about what it does. I'm not sure what it doesn't do. From communication to nervous system. I mean, I'm talking from sympathetic parasympathetic. The first thing that communicates with me if I push my skin is the fascia interstitial free nerve endings. First thing, okay, this is the first thing that feels me, me touching my forearm. It's the first thing that's gonna be connected with me. Okay, and there is three different layers to it and we'll get to that, okay. The problems, and you guys all know, adhesions, injuries, I mean, I still have it, uh, and you know, and my wife was there, uh, 
had a deep thigh bruise. I used to play professional basketball, played in college. And uh, the genius athletic trainer in France, when I was playing, I had a deep thigh bruise, and he massaged me the same day. Yes, thank you for laughing. Yeah, it's funny now. <laughs> we can laugh about it now. <laughs> and I tell you that four days later, I got fired because I was hurt. Because the problem was he massaged me. So what happened? I developed a one inch by five inch hematoma in my vessels lateralis that completely impeded me from doing any kind of flexion or extension on my knee. So I was walking around like that, okay? And I had to drop her off at the same place where the movie Taken was uh, filmed in Paris, in the airport part, you know, when the girl gets abducted. Now so I'm dropping her off, that was before the movie came out. But like, you know, so I get fired and I have this hematoma and now I have myositis specificum, which is calcification within the vastus lateralis in my vastus lateralis, I can feel it to the day. I mean, right there. <laughs> it's right there. Okay, and that's why I wish somebody could stretch me because I can still get it out. The scar tissue is still movable, I think. My hydration, my nutrition is pretty good. But, you know, so that was one of the things. So that's, that's one of the problems, okay? I see this, you know, I work with a dentist. So he's also 6'8", six, 6'7", six, so he's a tall dentist, so he spends a lot of time in, you know, in these positions. So I do a lot of upper body thoracic spine mobility with him. And I'll demonstrate the butterfly today, which is for like frozen shoulder syndrome and other things. Um, but it's just for posture, which improves body language, which improves your self-confidence, which improves a lot of other things. Okay. Uh, what other things can you guys think of? I mean, it is, you know, you can have scar tissue anywhere. You can have injuries anywhere. Uh, ACL injuries uh, from hip to quad activation. And we can go down the list of what problems it can cause if the fascia, the connective tissue, and the fascia comes from a Latin word, means fascia, I think, and it means to bond. It means to bond. So a lot of things come from Latin, and this one does too, okay? is to bond, to connect, okay? My word is bond, old expression that is not very used, you know? And solutions, obviously, in my case, I will go back to fascial stress therapy, okay? Like, uh, let me go back to my note real quick. Uh, yeah, this young patient I have, she's 13 years old, 14 years old, she's a pars defect. Twice within 10 months apart, and from the, uh, coming from that, she had a chronic back pain at age 14. So this is a 14-year-old little girl coming in, and <laughs> I'm the therapist, you know, from a small town somewhere in Oklahoma. And here's this guy with this deep voice, and I have to feel, make her really comfortable so that she can give me control once I get her on this table. And after one session, and my wife was there, you know, and I told her, I said, listen, just all I want you to do, every time I say the word relax, people get, you know, so <laughs> don't relax. I said, party, have a party in your mind, okay, listen to your favorite song, get it going, okay, whatever you need to do. But I just tell them, breathe. Just breathe. And it's been scientifically proven, one to two breathing ratio. One in, two out, it calms your breathing. One to two. That's the ratio. And I just tried it on myself because I was a little nervous before the presentation. So I was like, oh. Practice what you preach, dude. You know, the one to the ratio, so it kind of worked. <laughs> but so I just tell them to breathe. And we did about 40 minute session, and I told her, listen, let's see. And the way you have to come out of it in a way, you can't just sit up after a session. And this, a session, let's say, in case right leg, left leg, upper body, lower body, and I'm also going to focus on different joints depending on what you do. If something is hypermobile, something is overly mobile, I'm not going to stretch you. You have enough mobility in that area. I don't need to stretch you farther. Well, let's see if we can, you know, have this go all the way. No, we don't. It's fine. What is your strength at the end of your range of motion? How far can I get you, and how much strength do you have at the end of your range of motion? You can be really flexible and have no strength at the end. No good. <laughs> no good. Like, you, have no full, you can have full range of motion and no strength. So, so solution, FST. And uh, how many... But raise your hand so we don't watch the video, and I'd rather talk. I like to talk, as you can tell. Uh, my wife is probably sick and tired. I talk a lot. Uh, Gil Headley, have you guys seen the, the first speech? Gil Headley, first speech. Raise your hand, please, if you've seen it. Okay. 
I played a video, and, and, and Gil Headley is, a, I think it's somewhat awkward gentleman. I think he's a genius. Um, and he explains what the fascia is real well. Right now, he, he does tours around the United States where you can buy in. I think it's like $2,400. I looked it up because I never take an anatomy. I'm an international business major, marketing minor. <laughs> Self-taught, strength and conditioning coach, FST, fascinated by the human body probably since I didn't know. I'm a Gemini, so maybe my alter ego is the one that's fascinated by it. But I'm, I both of them are. So, And once I saw the Gil Headley speech and I talked to people, it's like, Dude, you know, the fascia. So, so here's Gil Headley, before to do, is I think a great way to present it. It's five minutes, really enjoy it. I mean, I think, I think you know, I think it's, it's great. Hopefully I can get my technology going here. Okay. Uh, let's see if I can get sound on here. See, it already starts out with a little waterfall. Start breathing, relax. Enjoy the show. And this is 12 years old. Good. Camera yeah, good? Yeah. So here's the thing about the fuzz. I'm going to try and do it at the camera. Okay. So we've seen the fuzz. You can see it now. I'll put it in over my voice. And that's the fascia. The fuzz yields to my fingertip. Sometimes I come across a stronger, thicker strand that doesn't yield to my fingertip. That represents older fuzz sometimes, or maybe it represents a nerve. But each night when you go to sleep, the interfaces between your muscles grow fuzz, potentially. And in the morning when you wake up and you stretch, the fuzz melts. We melt the fuzz. That stiff feeling you have is the solidifying of your tissues. The sliding surfaces aren't sliding anymore. There's fuzz growing in between them. You need to stretch. Every cat in the world gets up in the morning and stretches its body, and it melts the fuzz in the same way that the fuzz melted when I passed my finger through it. When you're moving, it's as if you're passing your finger through the fuzz, just like I did on the cadaver form here. So you have to stretch and move and use your body in order to melt that fuzz that's building up between the sliding surfaces of your musculature, the sliding surface, those shiny white surfaces of the rectus femoris sliding against the vastus intermedialis. So these uh, sliding surfaces are all over your body, and the fuzz is all over your body, and as you move, you melt the fuzz. Now what happens if you get an injury? Aha! My shoulder. My shoulder is stiff now. I'm holding my shoulder. I go to bed. I wake up in the morning. I don't stretch my shoulder. I'm afraid it hurts. So I'm walking around like this. Last night's fuzz doesn't get melted. I go to bed, I sleep some more. Now I have two nights fuzz built up. Now two nights fuzz is more fuzz than one night's fuzz. What if I have a week's fuzz or a month's fuzz? Now those fuzz fibers start lining up and intertwining and intertwangling and all of a sudden you have thicker fibers forming. You start to have an inhibition of the potential for movement there. It's no longer simply a matter of going, oh, ah, stretch. Now you need some work. Now you might need to do a more systematic exploration of that place to restore the original movement that you lost. And usually this is the case. We have a temporary injury, then we restore our movement. But sometimes we call this aging. The buildup of fuzz amongst the sliding surfaces of our bodies so that our motion becomes limited, the limit cycles become introduced into our normal full range of motion and we start to walk around like this. We're all fuzzed over. Our body is literally solidifying. We're reducing our range of motion in, in individual areas of our body and you know, for our entire body in general. So I believe that one of the great benefits of body work, whether it be massage or structural therapies or uh, physical therapy or any kind of hands-on therapy, uh, these types of therapies introduce movement manually to tissues that have become fuzzed over through lack of movement, whether the lack of movement is because of an injury and a person is protecting that injury, or because of uh, personality expression. That was many years when I just walked around like this, so I was very still and monk-like. So, and then I became a little more dynamic in my personality when I realized what I was doing to myself and the kind of life that I wanted. So, 
you can grow fuzz by choice or by accident or whatever, and yet here, now you've heard the fuzz speech, you know that you can take responsibility for melting the fuzz, and if there's too much fuzz in your body and it's frozen up, you might want to seek help in order to introduce movement so that the new cycle is a little more movement and a little more movement and a little more movement instead of a little less movement, a little less movement, a little less movement. Fuzz represents time. The easier it is for me to pass my finger through the fuzz, the less amount of time it's been there. If I gotta whip out my scalpel to dig my way through one otherwise sliding surface and another, you know that that's been building up for a long time. So you can actually see time in fuzz. That's the fuzz speech. There you go. So that's... We love the fuzz Thank speech. You. So that's Dr. Gil Henley. I mean, he and he travels the United States currently. You can uh, sign up for anatomy, and you can dissect bodies for somebody like me. It'd be great. And I'm actually thinking about it, so I get to know more. Because she took my wife to gross anatomy here, and one time she took me in the lab. I hope that was okay. You know, putting that out there. But uh, I was in the lab, and we, I saw the body because I was interested. Because I just wanted to see. I wanted to see what's going on. I'm just fascinated by it, and. Uh, it's a one week long course and we dissect the body. And that way you can see the insertions. That's why FST is also good, because they practice on real bodies. If you guys are familiar with Thomas Myers, with Tensegri, uh, Chris and Ann Frederick, who do trust and win, they are disciples of Thomas. And uh, I actually linked in Thomas one time. I sent him a message and he wrote right away back and he goes, yeah, we're actually in the, in, the, in the lab, working on cadaver right now, experimenting on some new stretches. Because they actually, what they do, they dissect, they take layers off, and they pull on the white stuff, the white fascia, like the thoracolumbar fascia is the biggest one. There is eyes right here that affects a lot of our movement through the hip, the ball and socket, okay? And they pull, they strip it, okay? And they see what moves, how we connect it from the right hip to the left shoulder, from the plantar fascia to the forehead. There's a line that runs deep back. So your frontal headache can become from plantar fasciitis. It just depends. You can roll your leg out. I mean, you can do it all. You can take all the abs you want. And if you feel like your foot is hurt, it might be starting from there. So it's just kind of how it's connected. Uh, just a couple of pictures of the fascia. I just saw tensegrity on the left top, the thoracolumbar in the middle on the very top, you know. There's a muscle fiber, endo, peri, epimysium. We'll talk about the three different layers of the fascia in a moment, okay. And I saw this recurring today, mobility plus uh, stability equals the fascia on that, you know. How much mobility do you want? And that's a whole different presentation of the ankle, let's say, at the knee and at the hip. You want some mobility, obviously, but you want stability where it's needed. Uh, again, appropriate physical progression and what is the context you're preparing your person for, your other human being. It's just always, you have to consider that. Okay, the function of the fascia, and uh, we'll go with this. Again, I'm not sure what it doesn't do at this point. Force transmission system, movement system, so nerves communicating to the muscles firing. There is no theory saying that we actually suspend it in air and the skeleton is suspended in on this bag of fascia because it comes, comes from in vitro. When the sperm enters the female leg, it's already two layers from the beginning. There's hypothesis with that, so the fascia and the layers are present from forever from the beginning of the way we made. Okay, how everything is in nets and in the tensegrity is that everything is dome-based because that's the, that's the strongest force in nature. It's everything is dome-based. That's the way we built. Uh, again, we kind of break down this slide into the force transmission system and what it does, ligament, you know, connects bone with bone, tendon, muscle to bone, and here goes the cycle and how we go and how muscles move the skeleton for me to propel myself forward, what has to flex, okay, and, con and be concentric, eccentric. And here we see the different layers, okay. The endomysium will be our deepest fascial net, okay. Epi and peri is the other three, so epi, perimysium, epimysium, perimysium, and endomysium is the three different layers. And I can actually get to all three with uh, fascia stress therapy. Um, I truly believe in that. And, I've, and like I said, I see the results. And it's one of those deals, if I didn't believe in it, and I told you, and I've had people before who have come to me, uh, 
ex-military guy who I think dealt with some PTSD, and this has been shown to also work on PTSD previously because of uh, the, the nerve endings that we hit with the stretch, and I'll get through in a second. This gentleman who was in a war came in, and uh, you know the expression, the, the thing that he told me after we were done with the stretch was that I feel more fluid, that I feel taller, like I feel like I'm floating. You know, you guys seen David Blaine? He kind of levitates, you know, maybe, but maybe not, okay? But, you know, I always tell him, lift your knee, just do a knee drive. And they go, wow, you know, it's effortless. If their movement is effortless, everything happens at a subconscious level. I don't have to, I don't have to tell my red blood cells right now to transport oxygen, it's happening. If your movement, your breathing, everything becomes effortless, the more you can concentrate on what you need to do. And you feel better about yourself. Um, it's also part of the movement system, the fascial network, okay? This is the back line, okay, all connected from nerve to joint to muscle, head to toe, efferent, efferent communication of the nerve, you know, efferent. I mean, we have, again, from this moment on, it's efferent, just the touch. I feel that before my nervous system touch tells me that I have a sensation coming on my skin, the fascia already felt it. Okay, and that's what then communicates up all the way to here. And if it's hot, then I move my hand. That's your exception, okay? Uh, and then moving forward, the communication will go to kinesthesia, which is, I had to make sure that I know this correctly because a lot of this is, like I said, learning, and I admit that. Like I said, I'm an international business major, marketing minor. And I have no shame in that. You know, uh, there's a lot of people that are smarter than me in this room, and that's great. I want your opinion. I want to learn from you. <laughs> I want people around me who are smarter than me. <laughs> I always like, I want to go meet people who are going to go, hey, dude, what? You don't know about this? You know, I learned about something yesterday that I need to research more. It's just kind of the never satisfied, and, you know, again, take it for what it is and, and don't try to apply this in a direct way because like I said, I'm not a certified teacher for this. I'm gonna show you, I wanna put the bug in your ear, do your own research and say, hey, this is bogus. It's scientific evidence, the whole of it, but it's bogus, okay? But, or just say, okay, maybe something to look into. Maybe you wanna look into it more, see what it is, and go with that. You can go to my gym's website, I own a gym, I have some free information in there, find out from me, call me. We can share ideas, ask me. You know, we'll have a Q&A at the end. But kinesthesia is the movement of the body. Uh, it's more behavioral. I can change how I move my body. I mean, I can, I can make an, an effort and see this. I always tell my athletes, I mean, do you want me to walk around like that when I hold a class? Or like even when I'm doing a stretching, I want to make sure that even when I pick up, I do a mini squat. And I have someone at the table. It's hip bending. When I pick up, everything traction. And the whole stretch doesn't happen with just me doing this, it's my whole body. I'm dancing with your body <laughs> while you're laying on my table. So we're dancing together, we, we stretch together, and I can't do it without you, whoever that might be, okay? Proprioception is the position of the body, okay? It's like if the lights were not in this room, you don't have to know if you put your hand down on the table, which if you move your right hand in front of the left one, you know the right is in front of the left. You don't have to see it. For perception, okay, it helps those. And that's muscle spindles and GTOs, go to tendon organs. That's what's giving you the feedback. And those are part of the fascial net. Those are mechanoreceptors of that. That's the part of it, okay? Interoception, it's another one. Nociception is the pain. We know that harm, okay? And these are all part of kinesthesia go fall under the same umbrella, nociception, proprioception, interoception, okay? And they're all accessible by FST. And then interoception, again, I kind of want to go back to the book because I think it words it better than, than I would, you know, um, than I would do it. Interoceptors in those same tissues far outnumber proprioceptors by a factor of seven to one. The majority function is mechanoreceptors responsive to mechanical tension, stretching, pressure, or shear forces. While about 60% are high threshold receptors, the rest are low threshold, responsive to very light touch. 
and this is quoted by Schlieb 2012, and all the, all the uh, academy is here, all the quotations of where it comes from. And again, the interception system is responsible for uh, subjective sense of inner body, negative past emotional events, blood pressure before and after exercise, coupled with subjective uh, sense of effort being expanded, pain intensity, in motor control is responsible for eye and hand coordination, motor learning. In homeostasis is autonomic and immune system regulation. So again, I can access these different layers by doing FST, and that's why I wanted to quote it. And you have an effect to be able to change how somebody feels by just stretching them. Not to only make it more flexible, but the way they feel about themselves. Let's say they do feel better. I can't release a sciatica. Like I said, this certain lady after, I don't know how many years, and increase, you know, the one to 10 pain scale. We're all familiar with it. You know, she said she was at eight. She got on the table, and I'll show you what I did with her. Uh, just kind of released the lateral line. Uh, and she got off the table, and she said, well, you know, when they start moving like this, and they kind of start smiling, they go, oh. And they're almost a fear of smiling, because they're like, Ooh, maybe if I step in, it's going to come back, you know? And it goes away. And there's residual effects. And when you stretch the tissue, I always tell them hydrate. Because that's when you can get water, fat, blood. It transports all that. Hydrate. Drink water, okay? We live in a first world country, and I have all kinds of people telling me I'm dehydrated. One of them is my wife sometimes, okay? I'm like, she's dehydrated sometimes. I'm like, drink water, <laughs> okay? <laughs> we have water accessible. I can go to a water fountain. I don't have to walk four miles there and four miles back every day, like in some countries, okay? That's a whole different story, all right? The problems with fascia, any problem, anything is broken within this circle of trust, <laughs> there's something that's going to be out of whack. The communication is going to be out. Something is not going to be right, okay? So common problems with fascia, and here we go, there's a little list. Injury, it thickens, scars, lose, dehydrates, and, and so goes the story. And a lot of these things are within our control that we can help or athlete or other fellow human being with, okay? So next, the solutions that we have for it, is obviously here the injury, reduce thickening, release scars, detach glue, rehydrate and or dehydrated. Rehydrate the dehydrated tissue. And I mean, I literally mean that by drinking water, it's just that simple. Drink water. I mean, it's just the fact how many of us drink enough water in here today, and I always get vulgar. I said, if your urine smells, then you're dehydrated, okay? It's just that simple. Drink enough water, but it's lemonade. Get it, get it in the system. Okay, that's something we can all control. Then if you have injuries, obviously, that's a whole different deal. Um, and I wish this would have been around when, you know, I, I tore both of my ACLs right and left within nine months when I played college basketball. Uh, one was contact, one was non-contact. I broke in my fibula twice, the right one. I had the Jones fracture. I had a Cyclops lesion, endless root canals, and uh, broken noses that I totally reconstructed so I could breathe through my nose again. But... That's just, that's all injuries, all trauma to the body. <laughs> all I'm saying is all trauma to the body. But if I can get this part of my body feeling good, so basically I'm talking about the thoracolumbar fascia, the deep rotators, okay, iliopsoas, then I'm going to be in good, in good show from up and above. Because this is, this is where the magic happens in life. Because anybody that walks, okay, is firing the glutes and hamstrings, okay? If we can get this moving, just a little looser and they kind of, you know, they get the feeling, of, they, they get nice and loose. It's gonna be, everything's gonna be a little better. Okay, like my stroke, my stroke patient who I'm working on right now, you know, we working on uh, releasing his gastroc and uh, soleus, because he's just constantly, he can't relax it because he's constantly in plantar flexion. Okay, uh, and he's, he's a heavier gentleman, it's, it's, a, it's a complete, complete different animal to deal with him. You know, it's also have to address the deal of nutrition in a way because a little weight loss would help him move better and recover faster, you know, after a stroke. Uh, so you have to get, you have to be real careful how you approach each individual and respect them for who they are and what they've done in life. Um, 
and pass no judgment because I learned, again, I learned from him because I learned a lot of things from him already as a person. And my goal is, the bottom line is to make him walk again. He's 68 years old and I want him to get his quality of life back, if not better, with fascial stress therapy. Uh, so that's what we're trying to do with uh, FST. And so fascial stress therapy, and there's me, okay? Um, and I'm performing a FST. I pretty much have, uh, that's for the hamstring attachment of high, frees motion restrictions to movement, trains the brain and the nervous system. And what do I mean by that? You can create neurological patterns immediately with this. And I'll kind of show you how and why we believe that, because this net that Kiel Headley gave, if we can get this net unlocked, then we're talking about microscopic levels. And so everything opens up just a little bit, okay? And nutrients can get in there and everybody can be happy in that little space and communicate. And everybody's happy above it and below it, especially if we're talking about at the hip, for example. Then everything gets affected around it too. Your overall well-being is better. Uh, Groove new movement pattern immediately, faster, better training results. And this is the groove new patterns, and again, trains the brain, the nervous system, is by detraction, oscillation, circumduction. I surround the tissue when I stretch. I always traction. I always sync my breathing with the patients. Uh, there's a, a stretch wave that we do. Or PNF is completely different than regular pro PNF. It's about 20 to 30 percent, two to four seconds, because we don't want to. We don't want to activate your sympathetic nervous system, so we don't want your 100% to create new range of motion because then really just we get into the spindles again and the GTLs. Okay, we want more. I'm selfish. There's a lot of, over the, some, some studies say that uh, flexibility in muscle tissue uh, is 40% and there's a table in here that I can't think of what page is on, but uh, at joint capsule level, it's actually 43 to 47%. There's more flexibility allowed in the joint capsule than there is actually in the actual muscle. Okay, so they're directly related, and we targeted the joint capsule with fascial stretching. We are directly targeting the joint capsule. That's what I mean when I stretch my 5'1 client who's 110 pounds, and I surround her leg and her tissue. It's, I have to be in total <laughs> calm and awareness while I'm surrounding her leg and I'm tractioning her up and the traction is going to happen this way. I'm coming up on my toe and I have to make sure I'm in a split squat that I'm able to shift the weight and not fall because if I fall, again, I'll rip her leg off. Okay, I will, I will hurt her. I cannot hurt somebody on my table trying to help you. Okay, so the traction, and I'll show you how the traction happens. My whole body is involved. So it's in a way exhausting, highly rewarding because of the feedback you get back from everybody who gets off your table. And that's what I think we're all trying to do here is to help other people. At least that's my goal. And I think it's yours too. It's just help others. You know, the gym that we named our gym, Gym Integrity. It's integrity meaning no matter how cool, rich, or educated you think you are, it's about how you treat other people. I have a lot of people who do real good, who don't do, I don't care, I do pro bono, I do mentorship, it's how you treat everybody to me is up here. Everybody's here. I'm not trying to bring anybody down, ever. If I did that, I failed them, you know, so. Fascial stress therapy, so like I said, from inside out, endomysium, paramysium, epimysium, all fascial layers are accessed and corrected. Works fast, which I think, you know, if you can give 60 to 85 minutes of time of your day, obviously you have to fill out a questionnaire, I have to do a basic assessment that comes, a medical record. Like one of my clients, you know, she didn't tell me that she had cancer a year and a half ago. That's kind of a big deal. You know, I was on chemotherapy a year and a half ago. So I kind of need to know that in your medical history. You know, I had to find, it's like, maybe, maybe you should have told me, you know, that, oh yeah, by the way, I had cancer two years ago. Like, oh yeah, okay, cool, great, okay. Good to see you, glad you made it, you know, I mean. So, you know, but, but, you know, again, you know, some people don't make a big deal out of it, and, you know, I have to turn the, flip the switch on them and say, you know, I appreciate you being brave and not telling me, but, you know, I need to disclose all the information to me because it's just for my own, for my own benefit. 
And that side of it is very different from being a strength and conditioning, you know, because I do a training waiver, you come in, and then let's go. And really, that side of it to me is a more holistic approach. I'm not the, the traditional, quote unquote, strength and conditioning, rah, rah, okay, let's squat and bench till we fall off, okay, but it does nothing to me. Uh, I try to get, you know, I try to make people better, make the person better first, and then I can make them a better athlete. If you're a turd, you're not gonna be a very good athlete, okay? So usually, that's what I try to do. And again, you know, it's pain-free, and it's based on scientific evidence, which I think that should tell you to possibly do more research on your own, whatever that is. Get somebody else's book, get Thomas Myers, look into either, you know, Rolf, the Rolf thing. There's different, there's different, very different, you know, like Rolf into me is very painful. This is very pain-free. This is very, Again, very relaxed, okay? Here are some references. Um, I thank you, you know, it's time to free some fascia, and, and this is kind of like the practical part. Again, my name is Yojo Sendry, and by the way, I go by Yo-Yo. Yo-Yo, okay? It's real simple. It's just, you know, it's it will stick with you, Yo-Yo. You know, it's just kind of, don't play with my Yo-Yo. You know, it's kind of relaxes people. They try to pronounce my first name, Yojo, and they keep saying Joseph. I'm like, no, it's Yojo, but it's okay. And, and, I'm, and people say, it's the same thing. Well, it, it is, but it's not. Because, <laughs> you know, and I take huge pride. You know, I'm originally Hungarian. I'm the eighth in my family. My son is the ninth. So it's like, don't pronounce the ninth, the eighth wrong. You know, so if you can't say it, it's not a problem. That's why I told you, yo-yo. But you can't call a grown man yo-yo. Well, you just did. It's fine. You know, I feel great. I don't care. You know, it's, it's not about you call me yo-yo. You call me sir. You call me coach. It's about, again, integrity, how you treat each other. Like you can call me whatever you want. You can call me sir and be an a-hole. So I don't, you know, I don't necessarily, I don't necessarily need that. I just want to make sure that we understand each other. Uh, and our gym is actually gymintegrity.com, and my wife is on there, and that's what we do. Uh, we try to help people. She does consulting there, and uh, she works with a lot of my clients. If you have anything, um, we take a lot of pride in our work, and if you know. We make sure on everything uh, that we're doing the right thing. We're trying to do our best for each person. If that means staying up at, till midnight and doing the right thing and doing the research and double checking and that's where it is. Am I doing the right thing for her? Am I helping her by doing this if I do FST? So I wear a lot of hats because I do human athletic development. I might do speed and agility at a high school. I might have a home client who I'm doing FST. Then I might have another client in my gym who I'm doing facial stress therapy. Then somebody I'm doing sports specific training with basketball. And I like that because I have to go because in the hospital, this means what? Death. Okay, the EKG looks. So I like that. I like to keep humming. Okay, I'm pretty high energy and I still exert a lot of energy when I'm calm, when I'm stretching because it's a lot of the energy has to go to different places because I'm trying to help somebody else. And I have to make sure that they don't feel any main, any way they feel real comfortable while they're on my table. So without further ado, I would like, you know, anybody can volunteer um, to hop on. And again, this is a demonstration. I'm not teaching you how to do fascial stress therapy. I'm not a certified teacher for that. I just want to show you how it's different from traditional stretching so you have a better understanding of it. I think uh, some of you, how many of you guys are familiar with fascial stress therapy? Raise your hand. Anybody, yeah? yeah my wife, of course. <laughs> She's like, yeah, me, okay. So she was like, yeah, pick me, and then I can show them on the stretch. I said, no, I'm not gonna pick you. I want somebody, you know, because she knows what it feels like, and it can be anybody, and I just want you to hop on the table and just, uh, and I wanna show the class, really, class sounds funny, but uh, I wanna show each individual on how fascial stress therapy is different, and again, I'm not trying to teach it, and don't try this, it's different, it's a lot of practice, I had to, you know, record a lot of hours to get my level one. I have to do a case study for my level three. So this is scientific based and I have, I have to keep up CEUs now for this. So it's, you know, they're ramping up what fascial stress therapy is. Uh, every NFL team is a full-time therapist now. The Denver Broncos had one when they won the Super Bowl. Peyton Manning used to get on board on every day. The, it's coming on, you know, it's just kind of the, the next thing. Uh, I think, and I'm not necessarily doing it because of that. I think I'm doing it because the feeling that I can provide to somebody else. Because it's just a great, 
for just a great film, you know, and I, I can't do that maybe possibly in five, 10 minutes, but you know, anybody who wants to come on, don't feel, come on, come on over. Thank you for being right, so, good. Okay, good. Uh, so, you know, just kind of give me a quick rundown. Any injuries, any, I'm sorry? She, did, she doesn't have cancer, so that's good news, okay. <laughs> so, no, but, uh, and maybe there might be some cancer survivors, and I'm sure somebody in here was a survivor of cancer, okay? And that's awesome, you know, and I like to, don't take it lightly, because again, somebody in here had cancer, I'm sure. You know, I'm 100%, you don't have to put yourself out there, but, you know, keep up the fight and keep fighting, you know, it's this kind of deal. Go ahead. And then, uh, any injuries, anything I need to know about? Not currently. Not currently, okay. So what I'm going to want you to do is just to lay down on your back. Okay, yeah, shoes off, if you don't mind, yeah. Shoes off, you can take socks off, and, but keep the socks on for now if you want. Um, and then I can take it off. I, I'm, I'm used to that. People always feel weird when I take their socks off and put it on. I'm like, nothing is beneath me. <laughs> like, Greg, Greg Popovich, you guys know this first head coach? He said, I want to coach people who have gotten over themselves. If you're one of those people in your industry that you haven't gotten over yourself because you think you're too good, if you're like, you know, and it goes to me, I'm highly qualified, I'm other strength coaches who are like very high and, and they walk by trash, don't walk by trash. Pick it up. Either you push the shopping cart back at the store or you don't. It's two type of people. <laughs> so like, either, you, either you're going to push it back or you're not. That's the way you are. And I care, that's a way of life, okay? So you can lay on your back, please. So like, I would do like a basic assessment for me. Let's say she's giving out a whole questionnaire of what's going on, and I have a good history on her, and she feels good. I can kind of, you know, and I'll be able to almost like sense if she's nervous or not, you know? She's pretty calm, you're pretty good, uh, you know? But like, I would check basically a, big, a basic hip clearance. I would look at her to see, Alignment-wise, if anything comes up, how she feels. We can see she's still rotated naturally, as soon as she's on the table. Okay. I'm sorry? Okay. You see the kid? Okay. Excuses. No, just kidding. Okay. So she just said a child. Congratulations. Okay. Awesome. What's his or her name? Zia. Zia. Okay, good. Welcome, Zia, to the world. Okay, good. So, so even, you know, the basic assessment, and I see I picked it up wrong, but, like, I would get under and cut the heel, and then I'm... See my traction happening here? I'm shifting the weight. This is what we call Mickey Mouse hands. I'm shifting the weight back for traction. And really, I would like to sync up with her breathing. So I'm watching her stomach, how she's breathing. And she breathes out, so I create a little more tension. OK? And this feels pretty good, I'm pretty sure, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. OK? And I might do this on somebody with lower back pain for five, 10 minutes. And they're already going to feel better. It's like Denzel Washington says, I guarantee it, okay? It's just, I guarantee it. But like, that's the basic assessment, see there? Then we can check like a nice basic hip clearance. And I can see, you know, if she does anything there, free fluid, nice and smooth. Then I can check her hip alignment, top of the alien, right there. See how she's in line. I can check a basic. And the external rotation, I'll turn, sorry, my back to you for a moment just to show you. I'm not doing this. Okay, so even just to check the external rotation. Okay, see I'm shifting, my whole body is involved in every movement here. And now I just do it with my hands. Wrong. Push the shopping cart back. Same thing. <laughs> do it right. Okay, so, you know, it's kind of, I'm just checking that. So this would be her sweet spot. So I'll do like a unilateral. Okay, traction, and just kind of find it there, and just do like a single leg traction again. I'm holding on, I'm not squeezing her. That's very different about it too, though it took me a lot of time to learning. She can't feel my hand on her leg. She, she knows that I'm there, but then I'm shifting my weight, and I'm creating that traction, okay, and the oscillation, I'm circumventing the tissue by leaning, okay, I'm getting around it, here come the paparazzi, okay? <laughs> but, and then I kind of find a sweet spot and I watch her breathing and I shift the weight again back. And I gently let her off, you know? And I kind of felt the ankle there, you felt a little bit okay? But you're fine, no pain? Okay. 
And that probably felt good too, you know that, right? Okay. But, and it's kind of the same thing. And this is very hard for me to do while I'm talking because I want to make sure I sync in with the nervous system and I kind of, you kind of go, what do you mean by sync in by the nervous system? I truly believe in that she feels the way I feel and I feel the way she feels. And eventually we're going to sync up within five or ten minutes whoever has the lowest energy with each other. It's just, it's again, all the scientific paper I read. I did a study on New York subway. Somebody sat down in a group of people and whoever had the lowest energy, within five minutes, everybody within five to ten feet was synced up with their energy system, with how they felt, their aura. Okay, so it's a different approach, but she's really relaxed. She's, she's allowing me to have, you know, her whole body. So let's say like I would do a ladder online. If she has some IT band, glute, meat, okay, lower back issues, a simple ladder line soup would be, okay, And the whole time I'm already tractioning on the table and I'm showing you. So again, it's very different from your other. See how her left hip is kind of rolling up, right? Which is fine for now. And I kind of get in here. And where do you feel this the most, please? What's your name? Tori. Tori, where do you feel this the most? Um, okay. So, so now I have her attached to my body. Now, okay. I create the traction by sinking her. I'm pushing her into my thigh. So you see my whole body is moving again. So I traction by pushing her into my thigh. I lean and I swoop around just a little bit. So her left hip rolls even farther, okay? I push your left hip down to the table, please. Get a little bit and relax. Okay. And I go a little farther. Now bring your left thigh down, please, to the table. Okay. Uh, let's do our left hip and left thigh down to the table, please. Okay. Good. And that's a lateral line. From being by also, but it's a lateral line, for example, and probably that side might feel, but you're going to feel a difference, I think, when you stand up. Okay, and we'll see. Uh, but, like, for example, one of the first things that I would do with her is just to see how the hip is. And she has to give me, give me the weight. You're fine. If anything, then you're fine. You're comfortable, Tori? Sorry. Okay. So how am I traction in this position? She's resting the entire body weight on my shoulder, correct? I'm watching her breathing. My left leg is in the ground. I cup the knee. That's why it's different from regular. All I'm doing is here. I'm pushing into the ground. See how I lift a little bit? All I have to do is really is to straighten my back, and I'm going to lift as long as I'm cupping the knee up a little bit. And this should feel pretty good on that hip, too. All I'm doing now, I'm moving the head of the femur in the hip around clockwise and counterclockwise, and you're going to turn this crazy, but I'm melting the tissue. Like, get this in, right? The fuzz? The fuzz is liking this. It does. Okay, it's nice and easy. And now you can see how this can be relaxing. And this is just a couple of the ones that I'm doing, okay? But like, for example, I'll show you how I go into the hamstring. Okay. So classic hamstring, as you see, and again, I'm not a, a teacher of this and I can't teach it, is push into it, right? Okay, I can't even, it's hard for me to do that like that way, okay? So I'm already, I'm, move, I'm dancing with it. Okay, I'm dancing. I get under the heel. Just a little cupping. This is minute. Okay, I get around it. I personally now, her range of, uh, it's just still good. I like to come around and put her leg on me. Now I can come, and I'm uh, talking about oscillate, I get a circumduct ground tissue. So I see how I'm coming up on my toe, and I'm tractioning her slightly. And I'm just going little by little to see you feel pretty good. Yeah, I know. You're not giving me that. You're fine. And I'm careful again, because I've never worked with her. I really don't know. But I'm waiting for her to tell me. You know, and not even to tell me. I'm going to feel where she goes. And I already pretty much probably created more range of motion than usual for her, because I'm tractioning her. OK? So she's, let's say we stop there. Let's be in range of motion one. So the PNF will be. Let's push back into me, please. OK. 
20 to 40 percent, two to four, and relax. Good. And again, I'm tractioning. I'm going to extend rotate her knee, let's say, on this one a little bit. And now I want you to PNF. I'm going to push back into me and rotate the knee back in the middle. And relax. So I'm getting a lot of the lines, meridian lines, a lot of the fascia on that. Then I can dorsiflex her, extend rotate her knee, and traction her out at the same time. Plantar flex your toe, internally rotate your knee, and push into me. And relax. Okay, and this is pretty good, okay? I think, you know, I like to stop there, but my, my, main, my main message there with that is not that I wanna teach you FST, I cannot teach you, but I want you to see how it differs from the classical ways of stretching. And how you can see how it teaches you to be a different, different world, like it taught me how to be more patient, calmer, but very quick, ah, let's go, you know, and I have to be able to calm down and relax, all right? So like, let's say, obviously, let's do a, a minor reset at the end, because I, I, I didn't spend that much time with her, but let's do a, a classic reset, okay? All I want you to do is keep your lower back and your butt on the floor, please, and just push, bring your knees apart. And relax. Good. I just want to reset here just in case. You know, you always want to do that and bring them together, please. Good. And relax. Thank you. And again, please. Good. And relax. And then let's just do one more. Again, together, please. And relax. Thank you. You know, and what other thing is that I tell them, and with the straps, what I would do, if I'm working laterally, one leg is under the straps. Okay. Uh, with that being said, start asking questions too, please. Uh, how many of you guys have dealt with frozen shoulders? I might do a frozen shoulders, right? Okay. Uh, can I demonstrate the butterfly with you? Do you mind? So the butterfly was invented for like frozen shoulder syndrome. I demonstrated that one. That's an upper body one that people like a lot. Um, and again, I'm not showing it to you, so you take this back home. I'm just showing you that this was also developed with cadavers and, and the creator of this worked on it very hard to see how she can avoid frozen shoulders with this movement. Tori, what I would like you to do slowly. So even then I would have told her, you know, and she said, you're fine, you okay? Yeah. I would have told her, you know, lay it to your side. You know, it teaches you a different awareness. I don't want you sitting straight up when we're done with the session. Because usually people come up my table and they got these sleepy eyes. They do, and they, and they come off and they're really unaware. You know, I really like that look in their face when they're really calm. That might be the calmest they've been all day. And especially if they feel the difference, you know, like my dentist comes up and he's like, dude, my shoulders. You know, like I feel tall. And then you can just please turn to your stomach and just put your face in the face. Rest okay, and horns by your side. And I haven't done any prior shoulder uh, warm up or assessment of the upper body, okay? And we're gonna see right here. Uh, any previous injuries or anything with your right or left shoulder? Okay, everything fine, okay. So the butterfly, for example, so she's a great candidate, you know, no prior restrictions, no range of motion, there's nothing, you know, that we do. But for example, for the butterfly, and this is, again, very hard for me, okay, is I have to deal with hair, and it's fine. And people are like, you like, you're fine. You just want you to relax. It's so like, even when I pick up the shoulder, and I slowly start working, I'm tractioning her up the whole time. I keep her up and I have a slight pull on the fascia, okay, on the arm, and I'm just working my way up. And my intent here is to get under, and the whole time I'm bringing her up. And again, eventually work my way to here. And I keep her nice and open. And again, some of you, you know, from the shoulders, you might be here. They always teach us, and again, I'm not teaching you, but I have to be real careful with a lot of my overhead sports. If I stretch somebody, if they have previous rotator cuff injuries and whatnot, and I actually work on a rotator cuff later too. And I'll be able to increase her flexibility by 20 to 25% after one session. Okay, and she has no problem doing this post-op. She's six months out post-op, and she has no problem doing this. My wife did the rehab, and I do the FST now on her. Okay. And let's say I get to here, and the PNF, 
Almost done, Larry. Almost done. Okay, but so I'm going to have you push into my shoulder, please. PNF, relax, please. So I'm coming a little more forward. See, I'm pushing my right leg into the ground. There's a lot of stuff happening while you look at me. You know, it's just, you just see this part. Then again, push into me, please. And relax. And then I'm just switching hands. And again, push into me, please. And relax. And see, even right now, I'm facing, I'm locking this cap in place. I'm rotating back in place. And I have a slight Mickey Mouse hand traction on the arm. And I'm pulling it and pulling it back in place. Okay, and I haven't had frozen shoulder, but I for advance of my rotator cuff post stuff lady. I mean, she drools out on this. I mean, it's just, it feels great to create the range of motion and come around it, you know. Thank you, Tori. And it's a... Uh, Let's give Tori a hand. Thank you. But my, my main intent, like I said again, just take your time. My main intent, thank you. And congrats on your daughter. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my main intent with it is just to, for you to get a taste what fascia stress therapy is. Take a look. Maybe it's not for you. Maybe it's not something you're interested in. I'm not advertising in them. Again, I don't, I'm not a spokesperson for them. I use the presentation from them. It's easier uh, for all the copyright. How do you feel, Tori? No, I mean, you know. Uh, I mean, do you feel a difference on one side? I didn't work on you much, you know, like even on the left side. I mean, I didn't do much on her, so I don't expect like huge, like she feels a difference. Like, you know, it's. Okay. Okay, like the whole feeling? Yeah. So, you know. And that, that's her feeling, you know, and it, and it sounds like based on her emotional expressions, you know, she feels good. You know, so it, it, it's different what anybody can gain out of uh, facial uh, stress therapy. I'm, uh, I'm Joseph Sandra Yoyo. Any questions, please ask. Any questions? Ask something. I mean, don't leave me hanging. Okay. There you go. Please. So you pull the retraction there. Uh, can you pull the glute Mm-hmm. Okay, what I'm feeling there is that I'm, I'm feeling that the femur is moving freely. That's the freest point where the femur can move in that hip, okay? And I just feel that I'm just kind of creating space between the head of the femur and the ilium and ischium right there, okay? And I want to do it in the sweet spot because I'm just warming the tissue up before I actually get in there and I start scorching the whole area around in all different angles because I'm going to hit every angle of the hamstring from orbitator made deep rotators to everything. I'm gonna get to everything. And usually, if I don't have time, if I don't do anything else, again, it's context. Like I started with the quote is, uh, what, what somebody needs. I might spend just, you know, 45 minutes to an hour just on lower body. That's what they need. That's what, that's what they need. So I'm gonna spend, okay? And again, it's a great question because I think it's really, you have to be really in touch with the body to feel, okay? And that's why I have to surround, and I can't, because I'm strong enough, I have to make sure that I do feel. I have to feel that that leg is moving freely in the area, and that I'm able to create just a little more traction. I'm moving back a tenth of an inch to a you know, half of an inch, just a little bit more. That's plenty of traction to just warm up the, great question, to warm up the tissue before we get started. Uh, thank you. Any other questions? Yes. On a uh, frozen shoulder patient, I'm accustomed to using them doing an injection of a steroid. Of course. How long after that injection before you can start to feel? I don't know. I can't tell you the right answer to that, to be honest with you. No. Uh, my, get it? I would say right away. Right away. Really? Yeah. Okay. No, it, it, it doesn't have to be right away, honestly. But, um, yeah, they know what you need and know what you're accustomed to taking. So just the FOP. They should take this stuff. If they're clear, yeah. If they're clear by the doctor, for me, that's my heads up, you know, if the clear author has cleared them, 
then I would perform it, you know. And even if they told me, you know, they had a shot, I would go to my doctor. <laughs> I would ask her, and then she would say, you know, you know, see, and then I would ask somebody, if not, I get on the forum, and it's a very active forum for FST, and I ask them, you know, what do you guys have experienced, what it is. I'm, I don't know everything. I'm, I'm still trying to learn. I'm trying to, that's what I want to get my level three. I want to take it to the top. Uh, any other questions? Maybe, you know, you enjoyed it. Maybe it's not something for you. I hope I spark some interest from within you, for you, with your group of people. It's something for you to look into. You know, add on to my 20 things list that I want to know more about, add to your 20 list, you know, things that you want to know more about, and then go from there. Any other questions? A lot. Okay, it, it's very, and that's just, again, I gave you a glimpse, and again, I cannot teach it. I keep repeating myself, but I'm not an instructor of this. I'm not a certified instructor yet. I want to become one, but that's just one. I just want to show you just one element. I can spend an hour on just the right shoulder. I have no problem with that. That takes a lot from the therapist. If that's what it is, but if that's what it takes, then that's what we will do. And there's no contraindication. It's not like it's, there's too much of it. You're doing too much FST. It's pain free. It's, it's you know, you're in the press sympathetic. It's, it's, I can take it up. I can take it up a notch. Like what I showed you with the, with Tori, with the external rotation of the knee and the dorsiflexion, that's, I had to learn that because that's a lot for the patient because now they have to PNF me back. They have to internal rotate and plantar flex. And you have to teach them that maybe it's a first time client. That's not something you do on the first day. <laughs> So APP, appropriate physical progression to everything you do, I think is key. I'd rather do less, but do great. I'd, I'd rather do less different stretches, but target the muscles that we need. But we do right, with right intent, we get the breathing right, and then we gain range of motion, and then we feel better. Um, any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Great question. Uh, I mean, simple things that I tell him, you know, bring your shoulder blades together. I mean, I just do simple protraction and retraction of the shoulder blade. And they go, oh, wow, this thing moves like front and back, huh? So I'm like, you know, just try to go here. I'm huge on body language. And everybody's familiar with body language, you know, because it's different from me presenting all the presenters that I've seen that I'm not standing up here bored out of the mind because they're excited about what they try to present. So just simple breathing. You know, I, I work on breathing with them even, uh, and I do that with my formal in technique, but I do that with even here. And there's things that I can send them home with if that's what's needed. At first, it's such a shock for them what I'm doing because they say, I don't feel anything. Well, that's fine. That's what they also, you know, people will tell me, like, I don't feel much right now while you're doing it. This is not that type of stretching, you know? So once they come in, and I just tell them, hey, you know, today, why don't you just, you know, stand against the wall? And all I want you to do is <laughs> one of those simple exercises, you know, just stay, just do a little external rotation. That's all you want me to do? Yeah, that's all I want you to do. Do three sets of 10, but do them. Do the three sets and do the 10 reps. Don't do nine reps, don't do 11, do 10. And just breathe. Okay, and whatever they need. And it also, again, it has residual effects. So if I, stay, if I stretch somebody upper body, then I see effects getting improvement for two, three, four days. Especially if they take care of their body. They hydrate. And they're gonna feel, you know, like the pars de, but the, what is it, pars de, pars defect, the young girl that I had, you know, uh, she had chronic back pain for two, three years, and she came to me, she had a pain level of uh, eight or nine. And after one session that was just pro bono, she was down to a two and three. And I just, I mean, I did, my, I did very fundamental, basic lower back, kind of like the lateral line you saw today. And then I had one leg crossed over and I stepped in, and I did a lot of dancing and traction in the lower back. And then she got to the table and she was just like, 
And she was waiting. She was hesitant to step. Cause she's... And she comes back now once a week and every two weeks. Like she's sold from a small rural town in you know, Oklahoma. But like they drive 20 minutes to come see me because she's happy. And she can play her softball and she's pain free. That's our goal, right? Everybody be pain free. So that's kind of the deal. Uh, any other questions? And I know I'm over. I'm sorry. Uh, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. It was a privilege. Thank you. So.